Uh, we've seen many design patterns, um, patterns in iOS development. One of the patterns that's very important to know as an iOS developer um, is KVO, right? What is KVO? KVO is, is, is um, defined as being part of what's known as the observer pattern. We've seen the observer pattern before. We've used it before a couple of times. Uh, namely, we've used it when we were doing keyboard handling, right? We did keyboard handling and we used um, notification center. Notification center is an observer pattern. Why is it an observer pattern? It observes for changes, right? So I register myself, in that case, a view controller. I registered a view controller as an observer. It observes for changes from the keyboard, right? For example, when the keyboard comes up or when the keyboard will show, I get a notification saying, hey, the keyboard is on screen, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. So that's part of the observer pattern. Again, that's notification center. We've seen that before when we dealt with keyboard handling back in unit four when we introduced that. Um, but today we'll take a look at a different um, observer pattern. We'll be talking about key value observing or known as KVO. So KVO is key value observer. So the objectives of the day is to get familiar with how to set up um, an object to listen, how to set up an object to notify other objects about changes, and how to set up an object that's listening for those changes on KVO. So that's the objective. We'll be using playgrounds to do it. But the objective at the end is to understand the KVO basic pattern of how to be a publisher, subscriber, that sort of thing there, right? So just a basic introduction, and tomorrow we're going to build in an app using KVO pattern, okay? So far, other patterns we've known for communication, for example, we know callbacks, right? You have an API client. On the API client, I'm saying, okay, I wanna hit the Foursquare API, and I wanna get data back for if the person searches for a particular venue, right? If the person searches for a particular venue in my API client struct, I wanna get some sort of result back, right? The way I get back the result is a callback or our completion handler, right? So here in our example, I have an API client. I have my function getting data. And in the completion handler, I get back the result or I pass back the result to the view controller. So this is a callback, right? Or completion handler. We also saw patterns, the delegation pattern. Right? Delegation is one-to-one. -one. So I have a table view. I have a view controller. On the table view, the view controller needs to know, or the table view needs to know, how many elements am I getting, right? When somebody click on a cell, I want to get updates about that. So that's a communication mechanism. And that in iOS, everywhere in iOS, we use the delegation pattern, also communication. But that communication is one-to-one, -one, right? One view controller, one delegate. Callback is the same thing. We have one callback function. It's tied to our view controller. Our view controller gets an update when the callback returns from the asynchronous call, okay? Other patterns we've seen, as I said before, we saw notification center, which is part of observer pattern. You want to listen to keyboard changes. Um, you register yourself as an observer on the keyboard or the UI responder chain. So when the keyboard comes on screen, you could get a notification from it, okay? The observer pattern is somewhat different from delegation pattern in that it's one to many or one to one, right? So here, picture if you have a tab controller, which we'll see tomorrow. Picture if you have a tab controller, right? You have the tab controller here and you have four tabs, right? How do I update or how do I let the other tabs in my application know about the change, right? The things we could do that's different from the actual observer pattern, we could subclass the tab controller and we could inject all those controllers with some sort of delegate, right? Or whatever it is there, right? But we still have to be injecting each view controller with that dependency, right? Here comes KVO. KVO, if I say I have a class, call it the subject class, the subject class now could broadcast its changes or it could say, hey, I have a variable on myself that could be observed, right? So at that point, anybody who's observing, any one of those four people here who's observing changes from the subject will get some sort of notification 
or a change in the completion handler saying, hey, there's a change, the subject name changed or the subject age changed. There was some change and now I'm able to update my view controller. Right now, this is one to many, right? It's not no longer one to one. I could have all four tabs in my app listening to those changes from that one subject. So in that case, it's one to many. I'll pause here for any questions or clarifications. Alex, can you, um, can you explain how this is different from custom delegation? Like, how is this different from having a delegate and then setting that delegate on each view controller? Okay. So that's a good question. So Cameron is asking, how does KVO differentiate itself from uh, the delegation pattern, right? So with KVO and the delegation pattern, KVO, I would have one class here, call it subject class. The subject class has a property on it, say age. So anytime age changes here, anybody who's listening for changes will get those changes. That's one too many. If I say a delegate, like say I set a delegate on subject, that becomes a one-to-one -one relationship, right? So no longer can all those observers listen to the same change on that delegate because it's one-to-one -one at that point. If I want to do anything different, it has to be from a parent class in the tab controller. And the parent class would have the delegate itself propagating down to the subclasses. Alex. Yes. Uh, are you sharing your screen at this point or um, um, should, should you I want was, to see I was sharing my screen. No, I don't see anything right now. Um, Do you? Does anybody see anything? I don't see anything. I see it. Yeah, I, I still, see. I still have it. Oh, sorry, everybody I didn't see anything. Sees, everybody sees the observer pattern on screen, correct? Yeah, yeah. the Twitter. Thing. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. My bad. That's my bad. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. Um, it's good to check the stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so Cameron, bangs, um, the way Cameron, the way <laughs> the way it differentiates itself is with my delegate. It's only mapped one to one. So the person who's setting the protocol. Right? Anybody who set themselves as a delegate, it's a one-to-one -one mapping. So it, it's not a many-to-one mapping. So you're saying it's not possible to have many view controllers conform to the same delegate? They would not get updates. There would be different delegates. They would not be the same delegate object at that same instance. Okay, got it. Awesome. Um, it's a simple check, like if you have four top controllers and you have one delegate and you try to set it up, they won't, because remember it's a reference, right? So if I say delegate um, dot A is pointing to this guy, I say delegate dot B, they no longer look at the same reference. I think Chelsea had a question. Yeah, yes. I was about to say that. Um, so uh, Chelsea? The, the oh, the volume, wait a second. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Am I still low? Uh, yeah, you're low. Your volume is a bit low. I don't, I don't know how to make it louder. Oh, let me see. Well, I'll try to talk louder. Um, so the the delegate, the not the delegate, the um. Okay, I don't know what it's called at this point, but it sends it sends the message to multiple things at one time. Yes. Anytime. So example, the the woman pictured in the screen, the subject here. Mm -hmm. If she has an age property, mm -hmm. right? She has an age property and her age changes. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's listening for changes on age will get the update automatically. Okay. It's very similar to in Firebase where we have a listener, right? In Firebase, we have the listener object. Anytime something changes on the Firebase end, we get an update on it. Okay. Very similar pattern. Right. The only difference between delegate and this pattern here, many people could be listening to the same person. Mm -hmm. With delegation, one person listens to one change or one um, one observer to one subject. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eric. I thought Eric had a question. I was no. Nah, I was just gonna tell you. I heard Chelsea like whispering. Oh. <laughs> Whispering Chelsea. Uh, cool, we hear her now, nice and clear. Awesome. Um, so let's move on to part two here, where we actually go into code. Any questions about the theory behind the KVO? We've seen many patterns again in um, iOS, but today we'll see what KVO looks like. 
and how beneficial it is to listening to to have many observers listening to one object. In our test example, we'll have one class. We'll have a dog class, right? That's the one broadcasting changes, right? Or that's the one having an observable property. In that case, we want to listen to changes from the age. Anytime the dog age changes, the other classes want that change from the dog, right? So we'll go through how that looks. So we have two observers in that case. We have a dog walker observer, and we'll have a dog groomer observer listening to changes from the dog age, okay? And again, you could have many classes apart from just the two classes. Everybody is listening to the same object change, okay? Any questions before we move on? Hi, Alex. Hello. I have a question. Yes. Um, yeah, so the class, does will that have to conform to Objective C? Yes. We'll get into why. Like, the minute we start writing code, it's going to be like, oh, what's happening? And then we'll start uh -huh. explaining each line of those. But basically, um, KVO works on only classes, and those classes need to inherit from NS object because okay. it's still KVO is a Objective C runtime API. Okay, gotcha. So we're familiar with at Objective C already, which is good. Mm -hmm. Introducing that on Unit Two would be a bit confusing there, really quickly. But now we are familiar with the at Objective at Objective C syntax, correct? Yeah. And we know that's an Objective C runtime. So today yeah. we'll take it a step further and actually have a class that's Objective C. Okay. Thanks. And that's the only way. KVO doesn't work on Swift only API. It's an Objective C API. Okay, gotcha. So that's why it inherits from NS object. Uh -huh. Like uh, when we look at Objective-C in the coming months, we'll see what NS object is really about. But NS object is an umbrella, basically the foundation umbrella of all classes in um, Objective-C. Okay. And everything Thanks. that's a class need, needed to inherit from NS object. Because at the bare foundation of Objective-C, it's an object-oriented program, uh, programming mm -hmm. language. Yeah. Very highly inheritance. Awesome. That, that answers you. the question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. Um, any other questions before we move past the theory into code? Again, today objective is to just get us familiar with the pattern, and tomorrow we'll use that same pattern to build out an app. And we'll have our lab as well. Questions? Anybody want me to go over anything? before we move on. OK. Let's uh, go to Xcode, and we'll use a playground today. Today, we'll use a playground. Tomorrow, we'll have a project. So let's go to Xcode, new playground. It's a blank playground. You guys are here crying in the back, right? We do. Sounds like suffering. Right. <laughs> Sounds like suffering. She, she's, she's been, yeah, she's, she's the boss of us, so she's a good actress. Okay, she's being a baby. She's yes. been a baby. Hello, Tiffany. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's just call it KVO introduction. So we have a playground, we call it KVO introduction and be careful while we save it because it could go to auto save. Just save it somewhere where you want to save it. Create. Let me make this bigger. Okay. We're all familiar with how to push playgrounds to GitHub at this point, correct? Okay. Yep. So everything we're doing, please just always push it to GitHub so we have notes and stuff. Um, especially with something like KVO, you may not use it as much as delegation, but you really want to know the basic concept of it and how it works. So whatever we do today will be a very basic template that'll get you started and also refresh you as to including that into your application. Does that make sense? 
because when we have a big app, right, there's like so many moving parts, like to in isolate one part, it's hard. But if you have a small app and get in the habit of doing it, a small concept, like uh, something basic, like scroll views programmatically, right? In your project, at some point, you'll be like, oh my God, how did I do this programmatically again? I forgot. But if you create like one snippet of that scroll view um, on a gist, then you could have it, right? Or you could push it up to GitHub, whatever you want to do. But try to break up complex parts of applications into smaller chunks, especially for resources. You get to your job, whatever it is, you want to go back and see what that code looked like. Or key keyboard handling, our favorite, right? The, the, the four functions we have, those basic things. All right, so what are we talking about? Can everybody see my playground? Yeah, Alex. Yes. I had a question. Um, is, uh, uh, sorry to just interrupt. Um, no, no, uh, no. What, uh, how, uh, what time will the lecture be ending today? Just for clarification. Um, maybe the next 30 minutes plus breakout rooms. It might be an hour-ish or less. Okay, cool. Good Does time. that help? Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So KVO, and what does KVO stand for? Key value observing. And bear with me, the syntax did get better because the syntax for this was a bit rougher before, um, but it's gotten better. I think um, maybe iOS 10 or so, it got better as far as like what the syntax to write. Uh, so key value observing, let's say KVO is an observer pattern. We'll say notification center, we've seen before, is also observer pattern. We'll say KVO is a one to many. Pattern relationship as opposed to delegation, which is a one to one. Okay, and I could put an example here. So if we have our view controller, let's call it, let's call table view dot delegate or data source. Let's call it delegate. Data yeah, source is fine. Self, right? So in the delegation pattern, where we have a, a view controller, let's call this class view controller. I view controller. And in here, if we have a table view, we conform into a data source. Right now, that view controller is mapped to one data source. So one to one mapping. Everybody with me? All right, cool. Other things about KVO. KVO is an objective C, objective C on time API. along with KVO being an objective C runtime, some essentials are required. I could say one, the object being observed to be a class, because this only works with reference types, right? KVO only works with reference types. So the object needs to be a class. Wait, Alex? Yes. What does Objective-C Runtime API mean? What does Objective-C Runtime API mean? It means it's using frameworks from the Objective-C um, uh, class of frameworks, as opposed okay. to being Swift-only frameworks. This is Objective-C legacy framework. All right, because now it sounds like KVO doesn't sound like a design pattern anymore. Well, KVO is part of the, uh, this 
Singleton, there's KVO, there's Notification Center, all those become part of some pattern. And the pattern that the KVO pattern is part of is the observer pattern. Ah, okay, got it. Thanks, Alex. Um, I mean, we could word that in somewhere. KVO is part of the, does that work better here? Yeah, yeah, okay, thank okay. you. Uh huh. Yeah, bring those up as we need them. Uh, so here we said the object, the object being observed needs to be a class. I could say the class needs to inherit um, objective C from objective C from NS object, and I could give some context there. So NS object is the top uh, abstract class in Objective-C. Anybody remember what other class we used um, back in unit five or four that um, was required to inherit from object from uh, NS object? Wasn't it like a core location thing? Very good. So core location manager or core location man yeah, manager also inherited from NS object. Do we all remember that? And we had a brief introduction to what NS object looked like, right? So th that's the first place we actually saw some class inheriting from NS object there. That was core location. Thank you, sir. Um, so the class needs to inherit from NS object. NS object is top actual class in object to C. Very good. Three, I could say any property being observed or being marked for observation. Being marked for observation needs to be prefixed with at object to C. <laughs> Who's doodling? Ahad, are you doodling? No, I'm eating pizza. You did pizza and you doodling? I'm not doodling. I'm on the <laughs> doodling is part of the, it's, that's how someone hacking us, right? I think it's uh, Mr. Smiley laughing top left here, top right. To honest, Mr. Antonio. Not, to be honest, I thought it was only on my screen. Not on <laughs> <laughs> Antonio is having fun and it's only Monday. Now I know, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Um, you're the reason why we're not using Zoom anymore in the schools. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, so too much hard work for those teachers um, and parents. Any property being marked for observation needs to be prefixed with out of the C dynamic. Okay, I could talk a little bit about that. I won't get too in depth about this, but dynamic here means dynamic. property is being dynamically dispatched. I'll talk about what that means. Dynamically dispatched basically means at runtime, the compiler verifies the underlying property. In Swift, um, types are statically dispatched, right? They're checked at compile time. Actually, I'll just put that instead there um, for more context. So in Swift, types are statically dispatched, which means they are checked time versus objective C which is dynamically patched and checked one time okay so when you see this dynamic here later in our code just know that, again, this is more tied into Objective-C. Okay, everybody with me? 
Hello? Thumbs up here? Okay. Thumbs up. I've seen those ask on interviews once in a while. So just know um, the difference. I'll share, I'll share the resource. Actually, let me share the resource right now. Uh, differences between static type and dynamic type. Let me stack it up. Please bookmark this one. Maybe bookmark it on the like interview questions or something like that. Not just interview questions, but I guess more language specific. Like if I have a folder, I'll probably say language specific interviewing questions, if that makes sense. Because if you say you know Swift and you know Objective C, somebody's gonna ask you, what's the difference? Something like that, right? Um, so I'll probably say like language specific interview questions. And definitely I'll bookmark that one there. That's a good article actually. Actually, I sent out the wrong article. Hi, Alex, come on. Uh, let me send out the right article for you. This one just has to do with what NS key value observer is. Let me send out the article. This is the article here. And let me. So the second article, not the first one. To make it easier, I remove the first one for now. So the one that says static versus dynamic dispatch, everybody with me? All right. And I'll actually put it in the notes here for whoever is reading this has access to it. Hey, Alex. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean necessarily by dispatch. Does that mean like the type is being associated with its exact type at uh, runtime versus compile? Yes, exactly. So as it's been either compiled or um, it actually post compiling, it runs, then it gets checked. Okay. Then it gotcha. gets checked by the compiler. Okay, I think I understand. Okay, static. What else we, I think we're pretty good here. Everybody has the notes? Any questions about the notes so far? I know it's a lot of notes, but we're just trying to build up context here as we go into the code. Take it piecemeal. So, um, uh, yeah. So like for the property, mm -hmm. are we specifically talking about like the class's property or does the class itself have to be labeled with objective C dynamic? The class itself has to be labeled and the properties itself needs to be labeled too. Interesting. Yeah, so the class needs to be, or number two, the class needs to inherit from NS object, NS object is the top, da, 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 and the class also needs to be marked. The class also needs to be marked. So can I also infer from that <clears throat> Essentially what it means is Objective-C doesn't really know what kind of type it is until runtime. Exactly, exactly. Nailed it on the head. Interesting. Yep, yep, yep. So you could say you're writing Objective-C here, basically. Okay. Minus the square brackets. So I'm gonna assume that Objective-C isn't strongly typed either? Not really, exactly. Okay. So only at, comp uh, at uh, runtime it checks. Okay, cool. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so good, good, good. Good questions coming up here. Wait, does FTC use the same compiler as Swift? Yeah, both of them use the same compiler. The compiler is written in C++, by the way. That's not. And some of it might be in C too. That's even not here. C is not going away, like COBOL is not going away. Did we see the news over the weekend about COBOL? Anybody know what COBOL is? Cobalt Isn't is like that a, a really, really old computer language? Yes. So apparently the unemployment offices are still using it. Wait, what? How? Why? <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> because things don't change, dude. I mean, That's we say language things. So difficult. What's that? Isn't that language like super difficult? Like they don't have like signs for greater than, you have to actually type out greater than. Yes, pretty much. And I see you in a microwave, which is a little, be careful there. <laughs> uh, I'm eating a microwave. <laughs> yeah, uh, COBOL is still heavily used. Um, I, I came across a couple of COBOL developers, but apparently there's some like bug I mean, in used the- Used by um, the government, right? Yeah, apparently there's some bug in the unemployment um, claims, whatever that has to do with COBOL, so. 
there was a thing going on the weekend about COBOL and uh, how they want developers. Let me see if I get it. Uh, COVID results in New York Jersey desperately needing, there, there you go, I got an article for you. So yeah, uh, let me show you that. So languages don't go away, like Objective-C is not going away. As we see, we still write in Objective-C here and we're dealing with Swift. Um, so here is the article, one of them. Okay, cool. How are we doing? So far, so good? C continue? All right. So any language you know, embrace it. All right, so we build up enough context. Let's go ahead and build out our playgrounds with our dog class. So we'll, we'll first build out our dog class. So we'll have a dog class. observed. So you start out with a class, whatever class you want to observe properties on. And here we'll have observer class one. And then we'll have an next observer class two. Let's say observed class being observed is probably better. Okay, cool. Let's build that out. So we'll start out with a class keyword. Again, we said KVO, it needs to be a class. So far, so good, right? Cannot be a struct, has to be a reference type. So we'll say dog. What do we say dog has to do? To NS object. Conform to object C. Um, Not conform, but inherit. Inherit. Right. C. So protocols conform, or classes conform to protocols rather, but classes in that case is inherit from NS object. Uh, NS object. Very good. What else did we say we needed to do to the class itself? Ahad was asking a question, and we had to write some extra notes there about it. Can it conform to Objective-C or is that not a thing also? Uh, the class itself needs to be marked at Objective-C. So what would the phrase for that be? Just marked as? Yeah, same as when we have a function and uh, it's a target action function and we have a selector, mm -hmm. we have to mark the, the function at Objective-C to inform mm -hmm. the compiler about the context of this function. Mm -hmm. So here, let's and can you repeat one more time what it's not? It's not um conform. Why is it inherit? Because it's uh, the dog inherits. So the way you read this line of code, uh -huh. I say dog inherits from NS object. Okay, which is also another class. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I know we see colons for protocols as well, but when you read them, like in that example, if this is a class. I wouldn't say the class. the class conforms to this class. I would say the class inherits. Inherits. Okay, that makes uh -huh. sense. Yep, very Thank good. Thank you. Okay, so we look like we have the boilerplate of what we need. So this is like basic, the basic structure of the class now. So right now that class could be observable as KVO. Okay, let's keep going. What does our dog have? Well, our dog has a name, which is a string. Our dog has an age, which is an integer. So far, so good? Okay, now here I'm getting an error because I do not have an initializer, okay? At this point, we could give it default values. Like I could just say, this is an empty string and this is zero, but we'll provide an initializer for our class. So let's go ahead and do so. We'll say initializer and we'll give it a name, which is a string, and an age, which is an integer. And here we'll say self.name equal to name, and we'll say self.age equal to age. Okay. So minus the add objective C here, we've seen 
similar code before. We've also seen NS object before, again, in co-location. But now we want to observe one of those properties, right? What does that mean? I want in my other classes, let me just write the basic structure of the other classes. So we'll have a dog walker. And we'll have the next class, we'll call it dog groomer. Again, those two, those two classes could easily be a view controller. Okay, a view controller is a class as well. Everybody with me so far? Okay, so very similar to what we had before in our drawing here, in our illustration. Here, the subject, the subject in this instance here is the dog. The dog is the subject, okay? And the dog walker and the dog groomer, they're observers. Okay, all right, awesome. So we have our class dog. At that point, we want to say we don't want architecture in our app. So now we want to say, okay, what do I want to listen to? What property do I want to listen to for changes? If we decide we want to listen to age, now we need to go ahead into our notes and figure out what we need to do. In our notes here, it says any property being marked for observation needs to be prefixed with an app object to see dynamic prefix. So any property you want to listen changes for, very similar, when I say changes, it's like you have a did set on something, right? So the property observer, remember our property observer, we have did set on some property. Here, I wanna to listen to changes, for example, on our age. If I want to listen to changes on age, anytime age changes, I want to get an update about it. I need to mark that property at Objective-C followed by dynamic. Okay, so now we could listen to changes. So now age is uh, observable property. Any questions? Our class is pretty much ready for observing. We marked our class at Objective-C. It's inheriting from NS object or requirements of KVL. And now the property we want to observe is also marked at Objective-C and dynamic, okay? So now we could continue on with our dog walker. Now, what does a dog walker look like? A dog walker, well, in that case, our class has a dog. dog. All right, so dog is this class dog. I have a property here, I'll call it birthday observation. This is new, we'll give you some context. So birthday observation, I mark this as an NS key observation property. Since we saw Firebase before, I could use the analogy of Firebase here. In Firebase, when we want to listen, like a, a listener, remember a listener in Firebase, right? We have a listener obser observer um, on our Firebase, right? So this here is very similar to the listener in Firebase. Now in my view controller, in my view controller in Firebase, I want to have my table view automatically update, for example, right? With a listener object, I have this listener here, very similar to Firebase. In the instance of KVO, the object, the observer listening for changes, needs to have this NS key value observation here that has a closure or has context of the actual observation happening, right? As I go into it, we'll come back and explain what this is really, but this is a handle on the property being observed, okay? So for now, I could just put that in there actually. Um, a handle for the property being observed. Um, in that case, we're talking about the H property on dog. Again, it's nil. We haven't set it yet. We'll set it when we say, hey, we want to go ahead and observe age. Then we'll give it a value. Right now, it doesn't have a value yet. We'll give it a value as we go further into the code. 
But for now, we just simply declare it. All right, let's go on because we have a dog. We need to initialize our dog. So initialize dog. Call this dog. dog. So dog equal to dog coming in. Great. And we'll have a private function to set up our observation here. So I have a private function and I'll mark it configure, configure, call it configure birthday observation. Okay, configure birthday observation, what does that look like? We'll use the variable that we have here, okay? And again, you use this variable in order for you to remove it. Again, very similar to the keyboard handling. If you register to observe something, you could remove yourself as well, okay? So here we have our birthday, birthday observation equal to, we have a dog, so we say dog. Now the dog could be observed, right? So on that dog instance, on that dog instance now, we could write our observation syntax. What does that look like? So dog.observe, dog.observe, observe with options. Let me do this again. So dog.observe, and you want to select the one that has options in there, everybody. So there's two, right? Select the one with options. Right now, my, my screen is a bit uh, the presentation is bigger, so you're not going to see where the options are. But please select the one with options. Do we all see that? Okay, so press enter. And for the key path, this is new. So the key path is new. What does the syntax look like? So you start off with a backslash and a dot followed by the property you want to observe. Again, forward slash, dot. This is known as key paths. This is part of KVO. Now you want to say what property you want to observe. Right now, the class itself is observable. So any property in that class, well, in that case, it shows us age and name. But right now, we only marked age as being um, dynamic and being observable. So we want to select age here. So again, this syntax, it was uglier before, trust me. It's gotten better. But here. The property I want to listen to, I mark it for a backslash dot the property name. That's known as a key path. And then for the options, it accepts an array. For the array, we'll say we want to listen to the old value as well as the new value. And that's like an enum property. So dot old and dot new. And lastly, in our completion handler, we have the object, we'll just say dog. And we have an NS value observing change. We'll just call it change. And that's it. So that's the syntax for that completion. Again, I want to go back to Firebase. We have a listener on Firebase. When we say um, add snapshot listener, there's a completion handler in there with the snapshot. Do we all remember that? Do we all remember that from Firebase? We have an add snapshot listener in the completion. Very similar. This is the same sort of syntax. In that completion, you have the values back. The values you get back, that's what you have here. So I have the actual dog object, and I have the change property. The change property will have the values for the age in there. Hi, Alex. Yes, I'm here. I'm a little, um, I don't know. I'm not seeing the one with options on my end. I don't know whether- uh, There's two, right? Um, let dog me do it again. I tried both of them. And so them. dog, you do it on the dog instance, right? Not the dog class itself, the dog instance. I'm doing on the dog instance. And you um, say dot, right? Inside of the function, dog dot- Observe. Yeah, dot observe. And there are two, there. Yeah, we're looking for the one with options. Okay, I see it now. I okay. had to make my screen smaller. No problem. Awesome. And the first argument is the key path. The second argument is options. You put in whatever options you want here. If you just want to listen to the new one, which is fine, you could just say new. If you want to just want to listen to the old one, you could just say old, right? Or you could just have an empty array. In our case, we want to listen to some change from one of those. 
And in the completion, you have the dog object, which is the dog instance itself, and you have the change. The change has a new value and it has an old value. What does the backslash do? The backslash is the syntax for key path in key value observing. That's a syntax to access the property on the dog object. Okay. Alex, so, I have a question. One second, let me just write some notes here. So backslash dot dog, dog is key path. Alex, can I make a quick announcement? Sure. Um, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm a sufficient amount through these uh, CTAs um, and a couple of these projects I can't grade because they are missing files. So please go and check to see if you are missing your pod files, your XC workspace, your pod uh, Xcode projects, because I won't be able to run the project if the pods are missing or if you don't have an XC workspace. That's the only way to run Firebase in any pod project, okay? So please go check to see and make sure that you've committed and pushed all of your projects. Do not trust the Xcode commit and push. Do it through terminal and make sure that you have all your files added and push them to GitHub and make a pull request if you are missing those files, okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, so this is the syntax, keep our syntax for KV observing. Uh, there was a question before. Yeah, Alex, I have a question. Can you go through the line 46 just one more time? 46. Okay, so 46 here, we have a handler on the birthday observation. We created this handler up on line, line 38. We created a variable. The yeah. variable is type key value observation, right? Again, very similar to Firebase. That's why I'm trying to bring the Firebase analogies when we're observing something on our Firebase. So here, that would be similar to like a listener, for example, listener registration. Okay. So here I could say similar to a listener registration in Firebase. And then the way we will do it, example, I would say a listener, listener red, Registration is of type listener registration. And then we'll do this, right? Familiar with that syntax? Yeah, no, I get this. Okay. Yeah. And then at some point I could say stop listening. Okay. Okay. This is very similar here. So we have a birthday observation. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have the dog instance. Mm hmm on the dog instance, now it's marked as a KVO object, correct, the dog? Yes, yes it is. So the dog here, we made it KVO compliant. Mm -hmm. Right, so here we could say dog is KVO compliant. Okay, it works with KVO basically. Right. Okay, so going back down, we say dog, now the dog can be observed, correct? Okay. Stop me. Right now the dog can, right now the dog can be observed. Yes? Yes. Okay, so now the dog can be observed. What do we want to observe on the dog? Specifically the age property and we, then right? Yes. So we want to listen to the age property, so we use key path here. Okay. Right? The the path to this particular age property. Okay. Okay. And the options. Next, the options, we say we're listening to the old value and the new value. So if the old value, in our example, we'll say the dog, for example, is five years old. Okay. So that'll be the old value. If I increment it from five to six, the new value would be six. Okay. Okay. We haven't used it yet, but now we have access to it in the options. Okay. Okay, so in here, I could say print in the completion handler, I could say print uh, change dot new value. Do you see new value and old value here? Okay. Amini? Yes, okay. Right, it knows from type inference what type of value the age is. All right, so what's being returned 
um, is change and we, with change, we now have access to those options. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So now we could do any logic we want in that completion handler. If it's a mm -hmm. table view, I have UI, I could update. If it's an image, I could update it. It depends on what the UI is. If it's a label in that case, I'll just probably update the label to say dog is now six years old. Okay. Okay, very good. Does that clarify? Yeah. Okay, cool, thank you. All right, um, any other questions for clarification? Yeah, just to yeah, clarify. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, um, the options uh, array that's represented by change in the completion handler? Yes, change hand? yes, that's what you, you say, hey, I wanna listen to, I wanna get back old and new values. And that's reflected in the change property or the change argument in the completion handler. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, okay, so that's good. Let's keep going here. So Alex? here we, yes. Um, on line 47, 47, in the comment, you have what backslash have? Dot, dot dog. Is it? Oh, <laughs> thank uh, you, thank you, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, thank you for that. So, yeah, we're not, we don't have a dog property in our dog class. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, cool. So, let's keep going. Let's just print some statement. Again, at this point, I could update my UI whichever way I want here. So, I could just put... Um, update UI accordingly if in a view controller. Does that make sense at this point? That one line on 49? Right? Okay, cool. So let's, for our per playgrounds, we have no UI. We could have UI, but we have no UI for now. You could do UI in playgrounds, by the way. Um, but for now, we'll just put a simple print statement and say, hey, dog got name. Alex? Yes. I have a question. Uh, I think I just answered it in my head. But no, as a question. Um, with API, sometimes the information updates, would we be able to use um, a key value observer on that? I don't think we would because we use structs to make the models. Um, if you have to observe something, you would simply have to change it from a struct to a class and make it KVO compliant. Um, okay. But if you want to do some sort of like observing on an API, sure, yeah. Like if you have multiple okay. classes, if it's a one to one mapping, KVO is too much. Mm -hmm. Right? Does that make sense? You have one view yeah. controller, one API client. So you, right. do, you wouldn't, I mean, but sometimes we use it almost, no, we just pass it along. Okay, never mind. The minute, anytime you're going outside of just one view controller listening to that API client, mm -hmm. you could do notification you center or you could do KVO. Okay. But if it's like a one-to-one -one mapping, like API client that's Swift to view controller that's Swift, mm -hmm. right? Completion handlers are fine how we've been using so far. Your completion okay. handler with your result type. Got you. Do I still sound low? No, you better. I, I heard you. It's a little low, but okay. it's fine. It's, did everybody hear Chelsea's question? Thumbs up. All right. Awesome. Uh, okay. So let's continue on. So update UI accordingly. So here, what are we going to do? So we'll guard because we saw uh, the new value was optional. So if I just say change dot new value, which is optional, correct? Right. Do everybody yeah. see new value being yeah. optional? Okay, so yeah. we know what we do with optional values, we unwrap them. So we'll use a guard statement, we'll say let age equal to change dot new value. Again, whatever value you're interested in, that's what you want here. In our case, we're interested in the new value, not the old value, right? The old value is what the dog age was before. If you're interested in that, you have access to it because you have the old optional value as well. So here, I want the new value. So I say new value, else, just return. And now I have access to age. I could simply say, hey, dog name, happy age, birthday, from the dog walker. OK? So here we interpolate in two properties. One is the dog's name. And here is the new age, right? Again, new value. 
that's the updated age, right? Whatever the age is at this point. Because in our test, we'll just be incrementing the age by one. So here, this will just be whatever the age began plus one. Cool. Any questions about any of this? The thing, the one thing just to keep in mind is what value are you after? You have the change, the change has all the, the change values. If you're interested in the new value, which most probably that's what you'll be looking for, then you get the change value. If you just want to update your table view, you could just say reload table view here. Again, I put some comments here, update the UI of the app accordingly, right? Here, we're just simply printing something, but it could be a label, it could be an image, it could be something you have to remove, it could be any of those, but now you have the context in the completion handler. And before you forget, let's actually call configure birth the observation in the initializer. So when that class gets created, it sets the dog and it configures the birth the observation, which is this. Because if you don't call that, then nothing gets observed, right? So make sure you call configure birth the observation in the initializer. If it was a view controller, you do that in the view loader. Or the initializer, depending on how the how the view controller is set up. But whatever you wherever you first see that object, in our case, the first place we see the object is when we initialize it. Uh, so I have a question. Yep. Um, what specifically does old refer to? Because I saw that there's also an initial and a prior, and I don't, I don't. For our with, context, um, for our context, after. we're using old and new. So the old value, I'll just say old value here. So old value example could be five. If the dog, if we increment, if we initialize the dog age as being five, mm -hmm. the old value would be five. And if we incremented it, the new value would be what? Six. Six. Why six? Because you went from five and you say plus one. Mm -hmm. Right? So you get back two values, the old value, which was what it was before, and the new value, which is what it got changed to. Mm -hmm. So old value would be five, and if you increment it, so if five gets incremented, one, new value, six. Cool? Chelsea? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we actually test it out, you'll see what the values are. And we'll actually just yeah, have a Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off for them. We'll just print we'll just print what the old actually just write a print statement here. Print um old value is uh, change dot old value and print new value is change that new value. So we'll see what those values are. Okay. Um, Alex? Yes. Can you please scroll up to the uh, the beginning of the class for dog walker? I I'm getting an error on line 50 or on line in your case 49 and it's saying passing a reference to a non um, Objective-C dynamic property age Make sure your class is as we have here. Um, okay, I see that. What was the error in your case? Did you I didn't it? have the, the, the keyword dynamic after Objective C. Okay. Yeah, the syntax is, takes some getting used to, but that's why I keep saying like, it's very important to whatever we work on today, push it to GitHub and make sure you have access to it at any point you want to refer back to KBL. Okay. Because once we use it, um, as far as like the use cases of it, you might use it more or less than, um, right? And then just like forgetting the syntax could be easy. Right. All right, cool. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. So all value, da, 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 da. here we could just say, give you some value, zero. Okay, cool. 
So was this something very identical for the dog, the dog groomer? Because the whole point of this exercise is to see that two classes observing the same property, both those classes will get the same value when those property, when um, the call is made or when the change is made on the age, right? That's the objective here. So that's why we have two classes. Other than that, it would just be a simple delegation, one-to-one -one mapping or completion handler. Uh, okay, but the benefit is multiple, right? So if it's one-to-one -one again, I wouldn't probably use KPO there. I would probably use our old delegation pattern or completion handlers or stuff like that. But when it becomes more objects, notification center, KPO. All right, so let's go to our dog groomer. At this point, we should be familiar with where we headed. Again, very similar. Um, birthday observation. That's key. Body observation. We have an initializer. Takes a dog. Self dog. And we go to creating our private function. Configure birthday. Observation. And we have our birthday observation again, very similar. And here, what do we what do we do next? Dog dot observe. Dog dot observe. Thank you very much. And what's the first argument? Age. So that's the key path, right? Mm-hmm. My double ticks here, keep path, page. And options, we pass in old and new. Again, we just pass in old and new to see what the values are later. And here we have the dog and we have the change. We'll unwrap, unwrap the new value property on change as it's optional. So here we'll use a guard statement, age extracted from the change dot new value. Can we back up? So change dot new value is an optional integer. And we just simply return. We do get the age back, so we'll simply have a print statement like we had above. Return from initializer. So here we'll simply do the same print statement. Hey, dog, that name. Birthday from the dog groomer. Um, I'm not going to print the new values here. Actually, let's just print it. Doesn't really matter. Let's just differentiate it. So print groomer old value. Is change dot old value use new coalescing default it to zero and we'll say print groomer or rather not groomer. Now that's fine, just first to know we in the groomer. Groomer new value change dot new value coalesce to zero. And what else? What are we missing here? We compiled last week. Will that work as intended? No, you need to call it within the initializer. Very good. So here I need to call my configure birthday observation. All right. So remember the compiler, we need to go line by line and make sure everything is happening. Right. In that case, if I don't have this line of code, this is not going to get called. 
I'd be like, oh my God, my thing is not updating. Actually, we should do, Antonio, remind me, we should do the um, debugging exercise with breakouts. Antonio is not here, is he? Antonio. Aaron, okay, so I remind. Amini, remind me. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, but I will remind you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we have our dog groomer, awesome, awesome. Any questions before we go to test this? I did promise 11-ish, 11 it's 11.30, it's okay. Um, any questions before we move on to test? All right, so let's go test it out. Says dog walker and dog groomer. Age changes. Okay, let's set that up. We'll start off with a dog. Create a dog. Our dog has an initializer that takes in a name and an age. We said we'll use five. Next, we have a walker. Let's call it dog walker. A dog walker is a dog walker. Initializer is a dog. We pass in Snoopy. Again, we deliver the same dog, right? If it's a different dog, different case here, we deliver the same dog for the dog groomer as well. Dog groomer is a dog groomer and same dog Snoopy. Okay, so at this point, nothing changed, right? So Snoopy got initialized with the name Snoopy. It has an age five. Now the dog walker got initialized with Snoopy and the dog groomer also got initialized with the dog Snoopy. So they both have the same reference, right? Again, they both have a reference to Snoopy. Both dog walker and dog groomer have a reference to Snoopy. Okay, cool. So at this point, anything we do on Snoopy.age here, let's change the age to one. Five to six. So at that point, anything we do on Snoopy here should affect our completion handlers. So we have two completion handlers on the observation property there. Both those should get fired with the current age of Snoopy. Okay. Uh, before we run the code, let's just see what's happening. So if I go up, everybody has the test lines here, or can I scroll up? Yes. Okay. Um, so the first class, what I'm saying, anytime I change, where am I here? Anytime I change the age, again, we have a dog instance. We say we want to observe the age changes. So anytime the change, the age change, we'll get those print statements happening. Actually, let's just put in, um, where am I? I'm inside of the dog walker. And here, dog walker. Okay, so anytime the age changes, we should now have those print statements happening. Okay, again, I always want to go back to Firebase. Anytime something changes on my database, on my listener object, the completion handler will run. Only if I have a listener, right? Not if I have a get documents. Okay, that's for Firebase context there. So let's go test it out. So run the playgrounds. Alex, I have a question. Is it? Is it Why with the space? What's that? Because groom, I know I thought code like goes from top to bottom, but my groomer came up first before. Um, one second. Let me just separate that up. One second, okay? 
Mm -hmm. uh, let me put groomer. I just put a new line on each of those here and run it again. Okay, so here we have Snoopy, happy sixth birthday. And we also have Snoopy, happy sixth birthday. And they're from different classes. This one is inside of the dog groomer class. Ah, spell, yeah, spell, spell, spell. Uh, here. What's that? No, your thing is doing the same thing, so never mind. So let me just run it again. Okay, so the first one, I have dog groomer class. The old value, Chelsea and everybody, the old value is five. Why is it five? We initialize it with five. Chelsea and everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, so the old value, we initialize it with five. That's why we have five there in both of them. And we incremented the, the age property by one. We incremented it by one here. And now in both of our completion handlers, they're seeing changes and the completion, the code in our completion handler is running now. Okay, so that's the basis of what um, KVO is, right? So I'm observing the property or I could observe many properties, not just the age property. I could have easily observed, um, where am I? I could have easily observed the name property as well by marking it at Objective-C dynamic, okay? And anytime one of those change, I get an update. For more context, tomorrow when we build our application, anytime we change something, our UI will change, okay? If I'm in multiple tabs on a, on a, on a, in an application, multiple tabs, if I change something in tab B, tab A, we also get those changes. Okay. Any questions? Again, if we have to go back to our scheduler app, we did it using um, our persistence helper, but our persistence helper was only one-to-one -one because it was only updating the table view on the on table A. If we remember that one, right? When I deleted something, it would propagate to uh, view controller A. But in that case all the view controllers will get the update if there's many view controllers. If I go back to the illustration here, right now we have two classes, but we could easily have four classes or whatever we want. Again, it's one to many in that case. So both class A, which is the dog walker, and class B, which is the dog groomer, got the update because the dog age changed. In that case, subject age changed, both A and B got the changes. We could have easily had a C and D. Any questions? Oh, Alex, can you scroll up to class dog groomer? Uh, dog groomer. This guy? Let me, yeah, for some reason I have like two errors. Yeah. Two errors. Uh, what does the error say? Oh, and now I see it. Um, it's because myself is not initialized. You equaled it to dog. And oh, okay. So you, you didn't have this line of code here? Mm -hmm. Right? No, so it doesn't, does not compile, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, cool. Um, any questions? We'll have chances to review what we just did in the breakout rooms with the, um, the check-in questions or the, the exit tickets. But any questions so, uh, before we, go ahead. Um, so dog is like the observed object, right? Yes, what did we write here? Dog is dog hopefully uh, observer class one here. So dog class, class being observed, right? Yeah. So like dog walker and um, the dog groomer are both the observers at this yes, point. Right? Yes. So this would be the dog. And then okay. the bottom observers here would be the dog groomer and the dog walker. So like how would this work in a project? Would our controllers probably be the observers at some point? Yes. Yeah, so our controllers, um, so this could easily be class uh, view controller one. Right, and then class view controller one would have an observation property. Okay. And then um, going down, actually this is two. And then class of uh, this one here. So call it class view controller one. So 
Yeah, so the controllers would listen for the class changes. So I could have like an hour example here. If you want to fast forward, there's a settings class. Mm -hmm. That's the object being observed. And there's other view controllers there listening to that settings change. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I mean, that's cleaner than Notification Center in a sense because Notification Center is like all over the place and it's harder to debug. Yeah, but I, I, I like the whole key value stuff right now. Exactly. And that's it's very little, closely with Swift UI, right? And everything coming up. Well, this is a little clunky, but I still yeah. like it. It was worse. <laughs> if you look at all the code, the syntax, like this syntax here, we got as, um, where am I? That syntax we got like a couple years ago, but it was worse than that before. That's okay. Older code is obsolete code. Ah, uh, no. Look at the COBOL programmer. Yeah, they yeah. all died out for then, a reason. But now they're going to get good money. The one, How? The one, the one, the, the one person who's left. I have one the friend. One who's left. He's I have like one nine friend. years old. I have one friend in Bayside somewhere. She, she'll get paid. And she gets paid good money too, actually. Uh, cool. <laughs> you'll, you'll be fine. Um, any questions? We'll conclude here and then we'll set up the breakout rooms. Um, Alex? Yes. Alex? Yes. Oh, sorry. Many of you, you want to go first? No, you can go ahead, Cameron. All right. Thank you. Um, so I was wondering, you said that we could observe just as easily the name, right? The if name. We did for yes. the dog class, right? Yep, yep, yep. So if we wanted to do that, would we have to configure an observation for the name? Yes. So I'll configure very similar to this guy. I would have a ooh, static. Hello? Cameron, can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, yep. Yes. Cam, so yeah. I'll, I'll configure a, um, an age observation as well. Oh, sorry, not age, uh, name. Cameron? Yes, I, I hear you. Okay, cool. And then I would have up here, I would have, call it uh, name, observation, also NS key observation, and then I would write very similar syntax for this guy. So we'd have to do that for every property that we want to observe? Pretty much, yes. Because you want to have different UIs, right, based on them, or you could just observe one property and then if you need to update the table view, just update the table view, like whatever context you need to. Okay. Cool. Thank um, you. Yeah, because here you also have the new like age. We also have age did not change, but if age was to change, I would have age value as well. It depends on what the context is or what the flow is. Okay. Uh -huh. Very good. Um, any other questions? So to uh, review, to review, <laughs> no, nothing. That's no, okay. Um, Antonio, ping, uh, ping Sloan. I don't think we have access to breakout rooms. Uh, okay. Because I think she um, might have to come. Um, if oh, she maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Is everybody gonna come back? Right. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. So let's just review what we what we did today. So we spoke um, about. Sorry, I do. I do have one question. Maybe a many does too. Go ahead. Um, my question is, uh, can you have multiple functions for a single um, property on the class? Multiple functions for the same property? Yeah, like can we have, um, like configure birthday observation to, we can obviously have it do multiple things, but can we have multiple functions uh, based off of that one variable? Um, I mean, you have in, in that case, you just need one function, right? Because you're only observing change on that particular property, right? Yeah, as I say it out loud, it kind of it seems redundant. Thank you. But in here, you could have different contexts or different logic, like if age is greater than ten, whatever you want to do, and perform multiple things. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then have the smaller functions good. doing things. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. It's good. It's good. Just ask them out. Um, a mini. Yes. yes. Um, I have a quick question, Alex, about custom delegation. Um, I thought I would get it as we went forward, but I still don't see a difference between them because can't like a multiple view controllers conform to the same or yeah, conform to the same protocol? 
when you say that that delegate object, right? Like, let me go back here. What is the example I had? Here, this table view yeah. has a data source property, correct? Right. So that data source property is mapped to one. It's one-to-one -one relationship. So here, the minute I say table view, that data source equals to self, that table view now is only giving changes to this particular view controller. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Good. I get it. Thank you. Yeah, thank yep, you. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. No problem. Um, so when you want to do one to, man, to many, as we said, either you do, I think I have the notes here, um, either you do notification center, notification, so notification center, or you do KVO. Yeah. Okay, cool. At some point, I'll show us what notification center syntax looks like as far as like posting our custom um, notifications, because right now we've only been using notifications as for the keyboard but you could actually post notifications but that could get out of hand really quickly because it's so easy to just like okay. say hey post this notification but when it comes to debugging the thing it's a nightmare okay um but at some point we'll take a look at what that looks like like to have your own custom notifications you could do it for like apis for example if you want to broadcast changes to multiple view controllers you could also use notification center like hey api is ready go ahead and post notification um so it would be something like that it would be like notification center the syntax is not exactly this but it's like something like post notification and then you give it a name uh whatever like api uh, ready or something like that and anybody who's listening to changes for that name gets updates okay again the syntax is very similar to our keyboard handling syntax where there's a name remember like keyboard will hide yeah right but again um just know that it exists but i'll give us a look at what it looks like but as far <laughs> as like one to many is notification center or um kvo okay Cool. Does that answer your questions? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Again, please us, uh, push this to GitHub so you have access to, um, and we call it KVO introduction. Um, so anytime you want to go back and look at KVO, whether it be tomorrow, next week, or at your job, you have access to it. And it's very simple. It just gets you up and started. We have two classes. We have one um, object being observed, and that, that's it. Apart from that, it's just like the syntax of knowing, hey, it's an Objective C runtime API, so I need to mark my thing in its object. I need to mark the class itself at Objective C, and I need to have any property I'm listening to. I need to mark it at Objective C dynamic. Okay. So the objective of the day was to create multiple classes and get updates from a property from one observed class. Okay. Very granular, and tomorrow we'll take it to an application and see what that looks like. Um, I'll pause for any other questions. Alex? Yes. Can we go over how to push playgrounds to GitHub? One like this time? particular, okay, so we'll end there. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay, so let's push this to playgrounds. So I have my playgrounds. It doesn't have any Git. At this point, I'm going to go to terminal and create a Git, okay? Yes? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> what happened to Monday? Case of the Mondays? I'm kind of having case of the Mondays too. Uh, let me clear that up. Clear that up. Okay, so let's all now go to our terminal. So Luba's question was, how do we push our playgrounds again to GitHub? So we'll go to terminal and we'll do everything from terminal. So navigate to your desktop or wherever you have your playground saved and navigate to the playgrounds. We call ours KVO introduction. So navigate inside of the playgrounds. Right now I'm inside the playgrounds. Right now I'm inside the playgrounds. If I do get status, I should get an error. Why do I get an error? Because we don't have. Okay, so what's the, what's the next step? 
get in it get in it and that creates the repository correct mm -hmm. that creates a local repository so at this point we have a local repository what next Luba, you driving uh, me yes i asked the question yes but drive just like yeah we we, we work it together we pair programming here so i created the getting it what else am i doing uh add okay i could do add. get status too just to make sure i know what i'm adding and i'll do get add you said correct yeah okay i get add everything so far so good yeah and then commit okay get commit what am i writing for a commit message here uh give you an intro give you an intro what else push push oh fiddle error no configured push destination mm -hmm. what do i do now now you do what it says i guess now you do what it says either specify a url from the command line or okay do as it says so what's the next step um, go to github go to github thanks brandon you're welcome i'm brandon now <laughs> hi brandon oh whoever you are <laughs> that's a hard many many people he's many people betrayed he's many people he's also pizza um <laughs> okay at this point we're on github right or not on github now we're on we, github uh, yeah so navigate to github and create a new repository Luba, you still with us yes okay so we could give it a name we'll give it the same name as our playgrounds introduction so far so good yeah okay um we'll give it a description we could make it public or private but we do not click on this um initialize read, read me here mm -hmm. is that good getting familiar or you have any questions so far no i mean it's good it's familiar it's just i think we did it only once so i just wanted to go over it again okay so click on uh, create repository do you mm -hmm. see the create repository button yeah click on it and you want to copy the line that says get remote add origin and the link to the repository mm -hmm. and so this one this is the repository we just created it's called KVO introduction mm -hmm. right so copy that entire link so far so good yeah okay navigate back to terminal and paste it in and press enter mm -hmm. and now you could get push dash u to set the upstream and origin master origin master so get push set the origin to master mm -hmm. and press enter and at that point it should start pushing to get up correct yep okay so if you go back when it's done and refresh command r you now have your playgrounds here well that's the wrong one. You go into contents at Swift and it has your playgrounds on there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. And that would be a good place to put notes, right? So here you could put like notes. Actually, let me grab, let me grab the notes. So I could take, yeah. Yeah, you could put notes here and stuff like that, like what KVO is and all that stuff there. Um, you could add a readme now, KVO introduction, and then you could put your own notes in there. KVO is a observer pattern. Then you could just put in as many notes because it's fresh in your head now you can put in as many notes as you want here commit file if i commit on my remote repository what do i have to do to my local in terminal pull. get pull 